My name is Bemi Solawini Falayon and um, I have a BSc in Accounting, MBA in Finance and MIS. Uh, with the MIS Finance degree, I've worked in um, banks mostly all my, almost all my life. I have about 17 years working experience in the financial industry. Um, after that, I decided to leave banking and decided to explore some of my own entrepreneurial interests. I started consulting. Um, a few years of consulting now under my belt, I was invited to join the microfinance bank in my state, specifically the First Heritage Microfinance Bank. It has about nine branches spread across the entire state of Kwara State. It's a state-level bank with a capitalization of over 150 million naira currently. As a microfinance bank, we are specifically established to provide funding, microloans specifically, to small and medium-sized businesses, one of which the agribusinesses are well known to be part of. Um, in that space of agribusinesses, it could be people who are involved in the planting of the product, could be the processors, could be the traders who take it to the final customers. We have products that cost across from the planters all the way to the processors, to the final people who sell. Um, in our microfinance, the First Heritage Microfinance Bank, we provide financing options like the asset financing opportunities where people can actually use it to buy their tractors, their seedling spreaders, their watering and sprinkler systems and all that. Secondly, we're also partaking of the CBN 220 billion loan scheme that was established by CBN a few years ago. This investment has started in earnest and my bank was actually invited to partake of it. We have taken our portion of the funds and we have fully disbursed it to our customers. Our customers include people who are in the Gary business, people who are in the maize business. We have some lumbering business as well, the Abigi Lodos as they call it, because in the space where we operate in Kwara State, the core business or agri businesses that we find them doing are farming, lumbering, and we also have a few Gary processors because maize and cassava are some of the staples that we find people planting. As well, we also have the traders because they are also participants of that loan scheme. So we actually make sure that they're the ones trading these farm products and taking it to market. It's, quite, it's not an easy business, but we also try to assist them with other resources and link them to all some of the people that can empower them along the supply chain. So hopefully that's been able to help to support their great business from what we do on the financial side to what they produce to how the customers get their products. So, I guess the question is what are the available funding opportunities to agricultural businesses? So, well, there are quite a number of them. I would say from the ones that are applicable to my microfinance where I'm on the board, um, we are partaking of the CBN 220 billion loan scheme that started as far back as 2012. It's been the spur since 2015. Um, the other, I would, let me talk about the other options, then I'll talk about their qualifications since they're all overlapped and they're regulated by the CBN coincidentally. So the other one as well is their Greek credit, which is the Agricultural Business Credit Guarantee Scheme Fund. That's also started like way back in the 90s and that's actually been trunched down and with this boss it was about 75 billion. I guess it's been gradually drawn down so the CBN brought in the 220 billion to augment it as well. There are also some other type of funding. Um, CBN also gave state level some, form, some parts of the funds of the 220. Each, each state received 2 billion Naira each to disburse through their own facilities. The initial one is through the commercial banks, then the two billion is through the levels of state. So that's three different funding options. Now, how do you qualify for some of these funding options? As a small and medium-sized business that is involved in the informal businesses, as we know it, farming, trading, um, tie and dine, hand vocational businesses, um, you would actually qualify. These funds are specifically made for those that reside in the rural areas involved in informal businesses since they contribute largely to the normal GDP of this country. They create jobs, they boost production, they also reduce poverty within the rural areas. So once you're in a small medium-sized range, you qualify. Secondly, if you're in good standing with your bank 
um, bank accounts, um, banks individually in that region, I would say step forward, you will also qualify because we use some of that records to determine your eligibility. Another part of it is if you only have, maybe you need 10 million naira for your business, then you'd be considered medium size. If you have 10% of that money in your bank account and you've been in good standing for about a year or two years with your bank, you can actually come forward and say you would like to access the funds as well and be a partaker. Uh, we've looked at also, apart from individuals, corporates have also be considered eligible because corporates is a group of individuals that are involved in these informal activities. The qualifiers of the funds also strictly the fund wanted to target women. A huge part of the fund has been earmarked to go to the female population because it was observed that they are the production of the informal business. They go to farms, they do the weaving, and they do most of the trading. Also traders, because they carry the produce from the manufacturers or the producers, which are the farmers, to the customers, we decided that traders also should be a huge particular of it. So of all these funds and the qualification, hope, you sit down and look at what you have available on your table and try to access one of these three funds available to you. What does it mean to be in good standing with the bank? To be in good standing, first of all, you need to have, have a bank account that has been open for a minimum of one year with that particular institution to be considered eligible. Secondly, if you have accessed a small amount of money or funding, could be 20,000 Naira from that bank before, historically, you must have been paying well and you paid fully, there was no incidents. That also counts in your favor as a good standing member of their bank customer base community. Also, um, good standing could also mean the fact that in the community where you reside, you are a, no, a known person, also of good standing in character and honor. That way, other than the financial aspect, character-wise, which also comes to play with paying back a loan, you're also known to be quite known, honorable, and of good standing, as we say in the financial industry. So what are some of the pros and cons applying as an individual versus applying as a cooperative? Well, applying as an individual has its merits. Like say, you want to have your own personal history of you own a bank account. Luckily, you have enough balance to access or apply for that loan and access those funds. All well and good. And also paying back. You make your own decisions on your own. There's no bureaucratic steps to go through to get approval from anybody else on how you use your own money. As soon as you sell your produce, you return your loans. Well, the backlash of it is, as we all say, there's power in numbers. If you had been a member of a cooperative, being a member of a cooperative does not take much. Could be between 10 of you, minimum 10 members, who have like interests. You don't have to be all farmers. Some people could be farmers, some people could be processors, some people could be traders. When you come together, there's power in numbers. We also look at the character of the collective, not just the individual in that group. So yes, we do give some of these funds to cooperatives. But the downside of it is you have to all walk through the bureaucratic steps to decide how this money made by the cooperative is made and is delegated to. So whether it's used immediately to pay down your loan, it's used to expand the businesses you've all agreed to be in, or it's used to divert it to a different business entirely but like we say there's power in numbers so if you're a member out there and you're thinking I want to pull out I would say consider the pros and the cons of being a cooperative if you're an individual and you're thinking I don't have the time I don't know like mind people like me go find somebody there's somebody next door that goes to maybe the school your children go to or nearby go and ask them they probably have an interest in your produce they don't make it but they know how to market it form a cooperative join together access these funds, they are available for everybody to use and we're looking forward to hearing from you all. Um, there are indeed some challenges to disbursing loan funds to agribusinesses as we've recognized in the microfinance space that we are. First of all, we have inadequate funds. As I said earlier, of the 220 billion nationwide approved by CBN, we are only able to access as much as we could take from 
the CBN based on our capitalization. We are a small size microfinance bank with state size. Our capitalization is about 150 million. We can access actually up to half of that capitalization. But on the side of caution, since it's the first time we're participating in that, we decide to take about 100 million and less. But we're taking them in tranches. Um, so far, the inadequate funds that we do have at our disposal are fully disbursed to the beneficiaries. Secondly, the other challenge that we've foreseen is lack of collateral assets. For some of the individuals that qualify for these funds, we realize that they live very modest lifestyles. They don't have the typical traditional houses, lands, cars that people put down for loans in commercial banks. So we go ahead and we try to discuss with them to see maybe there are other options and other things that they have that they might not deem valuable but are available. There's also another challenge of the high cost of transaction. To reach the unbanked in the rural areas, there's transportation costs, there's processing costs. There's also the cost of educating each of these applicants on what they're about to take from us is a lot of paperwork. So because of the high transaction costs, some traditionally shy away from it, but we do make an effort to make sure we address every applicant that approach us. Secondly, there's also the mindset that when they approach a bank, the bank wants all the information about their lives. We don't want their birth certificates, well, we might require some to just verify their age if it's a personally owned businesses, but we don't dig into their personal lives like that, but a lot of them are not aware. So also educating them about how much information is required to access this loan is also another challenge. Then, because of their location, a lot of businesses are not really established the way we think. They may be inside the homes, not necessarily in a store, in a plaza, or maybe we're talking of the interiors in the villages. They are probably way off the main road. So also their location also makes it a little difficult for them to approach us for loans, either because of also their access to information. So that's also a challenge. But we're hoping that with some of this information, they're able to access it, they're able to hear about the options they have and also approach us for the loans and funds to start their businesses. So what are the other options that we consider non-traditional collateral assets? As you all know, in order to access a loan, the financial institution is required to also hedge on their risk and in order to hedge on that risk, they collect a collateral asset. Well, most of the target market people that we deal with in the microfinance business, especially the First Heritage Microfinance Bank, we deal with people that live very modest life, like I said earlier, and they are in the rural areas, and they have very low income generating lifestyles. With the non-collateral assets, we're looking at the guarantors. For our bank, what we did is we've approached all the community leaders who are the chiefs, the leaders, the kings of those communities where these applicants reside and we've gone to them to ask if these known individuals are known to them and of good standing. Like I mentioned earlier, they have to be known in the community. So if they're known in the community, they must be known to these community leaders. And these communities now sit as guarantors and co-sign some of their applications for the loan. And we've actually disbursed most of our funds. Some of them actually guarantee backed loan funding that we've given and we've had 100% repayment so far since the beginning of the year that we've given out uh, close to 100 million um, naira to some of our applicants that are now beneficiaries. Secondly, the other options that we've actually found out that is working, it's a non-traditional method but it does work, is when the applicant comes to us they need to have an average of minimum 10% of the value they're asking for for funding. Now that percentage is required to sit in the account until they have paid the loan back. So that is our own guarantee and our own collateral that we've seen. But still accessible to them, they can service that balance as they want, as they deem fit. When they collect the funds, the funds are actually paid into their microfinance back account and they draw down on it as long as they maintain the minimum of the 10%. So when they do that, they also realize that they're accountable for funds they've taken away. Luckily, that's been helping us to educate them on how to access their fund, how to draw down on it, how to also maintain a good standing balance in our establishment. For the funding options that I mentioned earlier, the CBN 220 billion loan scheme um, specifically has an interest rate of 9% and the Agric credit 
guarantee scheme has an average interest rate of 6% respectively. So hopefully um, we all do understand that these rates are much lower than those charged by the commercial banks that run between 15% to almost 30%, which is why we exist as a microfinance bank to give micro loans to small and medium sized businesses, mostly those that are involved in the agri business. My final thoughts I would say, first and foremost, if you have access any of these funds or you're thinking of accessing these funds, I would advise you to go ahead, but do follow some of these guidelines. They would help you stay on point, stay in good standing, and also stay in business. First and foremost, keep proper record keeping of your income and your expenditure. At the end of the day, you want to be able to say that this is how much I have, I do have enough to pay back the loans to the banks and also do some extra work. And successfully, if your business is growing, that extra money could be used to grow your business and expand. Secondly, we're also asking you to stay focused on your business. We have a record of people that have collected the money to plant maize. They'll take that money and go and plant cassava. They don't know a lot about cassava, but they do know about maize. But maybe they thought cassava is what is in fashion at that point in time, and they failed at it. So I would say stay focused, stay passionate about what you do, keep proper record keeping. And lastly, I would say when you are in the business that you are in, your seed money, which is the loan you have collected from the bank, is a one-time tranche, is a one-time infusion. When you do think about giving credit to your customers, because after all, we're in Africa, most businesses do give credit. But as a farmer, you cannot afford to give away your goods or your produce without collecting something of value in return. You can do trade by barter. We've seen it, it happens in a lot of rural communities. But make sure that when you're doing it, you're getting value back. You're not going down in terms of your value, in terms of your income. Plus, we do tell you that when you're doing business, stay focused, keep proper record keeping, and have minimum tolerance for credit. So I'll say good luck on your businesses and have fun.